repeat that in the second half, that determination in defence, and maybe take a chance or two if it comes their way. Or will Saints put the pedal to the metal and assert their authority in the second half? We're about to get underway. Okay, mate, you've got to go. Save your hand, boys. And Hull will be attacking the end where their supporters are congregated. And they have had, they have been frail at the start of the second half. Certainly were frail at the start of the second half last weekend against uh, Salford in that embarrassing thumping. Two. But that's the beauty about sport, Bill, isn't it? You know, six, seven days later, you get to showcase to your fans and put on a performance that almost, whilst it doesn't leave the memory of the players and the coaches and the fans, it certainly goes a shot in the arm to, to looking like that you rectify that and you're looking like that you, that you respect the shirt, you respect the club. And I thought Hull FC granted the R4-0 down on the scoreboard. I thought they were pretty impressive in that first half, particularly defensively. Well, Phil Clark, before the game, talked about sides. Sometimes you learn, sometimes you lose, and if you're a side that learns and takes those lessons into the following week, you know, there's a long way to go in this game here, but we've certainly seen a response and a reaction from Hull FC. Tex Hoy gathers the kick. Let's go down to the sideline. We can hear from Saints assistant coach Laurent Fraserneau. Laurent, there's a, a, a bit of improvement to come from Saints maybe in the second half. Yes, definitely. We, we, we talk about what we have to improve um, in second half, I think, defensively. That's what's been said in the dressing room. Defensively, there's a great effort. Uh, we didn't panic, even if we have some late uh, change of personnel. So, so defensively, it's been good. We miss a few opportunities with the ball uh, in first half. So. We talk about it at our time, but uh, yeah, there is room for improvement in second half. But you've got a, a battle on your hands here with Hull. They're, they're putting up a good effort. Yeah, yeah, we're very, very pleased with uh, with the effort. So, so we need to stick to it and uh, be a bit, but a bit smarter with the uh, with the ball and uh, keep the same energy in defence. Lauren, thanks again for talking to us. Thank you. Long way from the southwest of France, but. Following his career path, Laurent Fresno, big opportunity for him to be working at the home of the World Club Champions alongside Paul Wellens. Saints in possession. With Brad, Lees. Brad Fashler making the tackle. Terry O'Connor mentioned it at half time 39 tackles he's done so far in this game, a humongous effort. Wellsby again, change of direction, comes back towards the middle of the field, fifth tackle. Lomax are going to run this one, Sirenen gets it to Ben Davis, Davis to T. Ritson, and Ritson trying to stay in the field of play, manages to keep it alive, still on the last, Ben Davis puts the kick in, Tex Hoy is underneath it, Hoy claims it, and Davis with the follow-up tackle, Saints did, did well, to make something out of that because at one point it looked though Ritson was going to go out of play and that's again Hull battling there in defence Gareth Ellis we cut him off at the end of the first half unfortunately when Ben Davis scored his try but that apart Gareth you've got to be pleased with the effort yeah outstanding you know totally different from uh, obviously last week's performance and you know, really pleasing to see the boys working really hard for each other and um, you know to keep the Saints out for as long as we did um, you know, was, was a, a massive boost for us. Um, obviously, I think Saints uh, pride themselves on doing that sort of stuff for longer than, uh, than their opposition. So, 40 minutes down, another uh, big 40 minutes, and a real challenge for us, I think, ahead in this next, uh, next 40 minutes. Gareth, thanks for talking to us again. Thank you. And that's what I was referencing, Bill early in the first half when I said that St Helens they will not get flustered by going set for set with any side in the competition they know that when they get an opportunity more often than not they take it and it took until the last 30 seconds before Ben Davis well it opened up wasn't it an overchase from Josh Griffin but they'll be happy with with everything they're doing now yes they want a little bit more quality but you know they are off the back of that world club challenge they just haven't quite got going yet look at Fash Flashing out of the line, Brad Fash to cut down Wellsby in full flight. 
Makington slow to get to his feet. Lees, the direct approach from the prop forward. Lussick, Saints looking to open up at the start of the second half. The hoisted kick from Dodd, and it's well claimed. It's Davy Litton who came in off his wing to gather that ball. He did well there. Yeah, that was a great take. It was a good escort there from Hull FC. They managed to put a couple of bodies in and around it. Tommy Bakerton gets through, but he just climbs higher. Brad Dwyer on for Hull FC now. He's a man that can make things happen, especially around the rock, around the play of the ball. Quick play of the ball and he's off. Yeah. It was an interesting choice of word from Gareth Ellis. Talked about the challenge ahead of them. And building on what you've said, Kyle, about the way that St Helens approached the game, Just going set for set, the challenge for Hull FC is to do the same. Stay in that grind, but take the opportunities when they present themselves. Yeah. One. Come it's on, Fash on the back of that Hull. penalty. Hull, six again. Hull, and as Wigan have gone ahead against Huddersfield, 14-12, set restart, signalled by the referee, and One. the klaxon a few Move metres away from us. Hull. Warrington Hull. in control against Hull. Lee, 26-8, the scoreline there. Little Straight darting the run. Go, two. Here is Griffin, denied a try in the first half. Three tackles gone. Here is Clifford now. Just lays it off for Brad Fash. Referee calls held, Saints just about back on their own try line. Here is Clifford, lobs the ball over the top, and again, Griffin goes running straight at T. Ritson. And now then, his text Hoy. Hoy's ball is batted down by Lussick, picked up by Lomadua, six to go. Lomadua wanted the kick, then he was pointing to the space behind the defensive line. Brad Dwyer's ball is Clifford, and Hull threatening here. Dwyer might fancy this, Dwyer might fancy this. He's held up just short. Big tackle. Get off the ball, off the ball. ball. Saints back on their own try line. Lee's really pushing his luck there, and he pushed it too far. Scott Taylor's got the centre of a try. Can he get that down? He's held up, says the referee. Right hand there from Wellsby. Taylor thinks he's got it down. Oh, wow. Referee's going Mate, to the ball. He scored his first for four years at heading late. the ground in, please, mate. Yeah. Tackle the one on for a call of the try. Can we check around him, please? So he's in possession. And we'll keep playing this through. This ball is still up and he's still in possession, clean here. Keep playing this through, please. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. So he's clearly in possession. I can see the ball up, the tackle is not complete. Oh, go back on this frame, please. Just stay on this angle, please, from it, and just roll this one through, please. Thank you. I've seen all the angles I need. Wow! Whoa! As you said, he's in a try-scoring run of form. Is Scott Taylor. And he's got one to level the scores tonight. Yeah, well, they all don't have to be perfect, Bill, do they? You still get the same amount of points, and Scott Taylor there, it's just his willingness to put that ball down. From the base, of, from Dummy Hart, runs into Matty Lees, and just keeps the arm going there, gets out of it, and just dots the ball down. But as you mentioned, he scored his first try of this season in that away win over Leeds. Well, I think his last try came on this very ground back in 2019 against the Saints, but he's just got another one tonight. You'll often see a big man think, I can outpower and oversize the defenders in front of him, and 99 times out of 100, he'll get that wrong, but he kept moving, he kept wriggling. And Scott Taylor, using all that experience, gets his second try in four games. He's prolific. And then Jake Clifford with the opportunity to put Hull FC ahead in this game. Reward for a magnificent effort from the blue and whites as they are tonight. 
and you can see the little congregation of whole supporters. Nine goals to his name so far this season. And there's another one, he's into double figures. 6-4, Hull lead. Well, Tag Taylor on Hull FC finally notched up some points. It wasn't pretty, but they all count. And I'm interested now to see what that will do for Saints. Carl, you and I have been speaking all night about the attritional approach that St Helens have got towards any game. Will that change their attitude or will they just do the same again more effectively? No, I think they'll just carry on as they are. They'll be disappointed with that try. Scott Taylor there, he just wanted it a little bit more. Got the ball down. Jack Wellsby tried his very best. As Taylor now carries the ball once more. Adam Swift is oh, conspicuous oh, by his absence. And there's news from Jenna. Yeah, Bill, just keep your eye on uh, the left wing for Hull FC, Adam Swift right there. At halftime, he came out for a, a fitness test on his calf. He just felt a, a little bit of uncomfort in that first half, but he's passed the fitness test. Clearly, he is out there and he's looking like he's OK. I'll tell you one guy who might be out, Ben Davies in back play. Looked like that right knee. Yeah, really struggling. awkward in the tackle. He's struggling in back play. I think he needs to leave. Wellsby safe underneath that kick. So they had disruption in the three quarters before the game. Yeah, he's coming off now. And now they've got another problem. Okay, Hull FC give a penalty away. Through Lover do it. Jack Wellsby skirting across there, just steps hard off his left foot. He's, he's so good at that. You mentioned Ritz yeah. and the way that they go towards and then veer away from players. Well, there's Ben Davis making his way. And you could just help us, give yeah. you the way he threw he reacted in that tackle. It. It's never a great sign when the player grabs the knee straight away. In that much discomfort, Morgan Knowles enters back into the field. How will they reshuffle, Kyle, do you think? Who will they put in the three quarters? They've got Makinson in there already. Well, they've already got one winger in there. Well, it looks like they've shipped out Jake Wingfield out to that right-hand side. Morgan Knowles coming back in, taking over that loose forward roll. And a mess onto the field. For his 349th appearance for Saints, what a servant he's been. Yeah, if they want a bit of vigorosity, then call on LMS. Move, it, it, um, LMS has played centre before. Did a sit-down interview. It was brilliant. If you haven't watched it, catch up on demand. He was absolutely. Yeah. Oh, he was brilliant. Great value. He he was brilliant. Yeah, you, and I was brilliant, obviously. But LMS, great value. And he said the one thing that stayed with him has been his speed. And his pace. Yeah. Is he kidding himself or is he true? No, he sees very, very quick. Morgan Knoll straightens up through the middle of the field. It's Siridan who's found himself in right centre. That's fifth Jake tackle. Wing Jake Wingfield inside of him. Bang in front of the posts. Dodds. Dodds stabs a little kick in and Tex Hoy is going to have to just carry that one over the dead ball line to make it safe. The pursuit from Tommy Makinson. He likes that Paul Wellens, does he? You can see yeah. he's grabbing, grabbing the mic. He wants to get the message down to his players keep up with that kind of stuff just tighten that vice up give it another little twist another little turn another gorgeous kick there from Lewis Dodd 21 year old just sliding it through and just trying to crank up that pressure valve 32-8 Warrington dominating their game against uh, Lee Leopards and there'll be no short kick off a uh, short restart from Hull this time right up to the halfway line. Here comes Louis McCarthy, Scarthbrook. You can take the lad out of Millwall. You can take Millwall out of the lad. Former Greenwich Admiral. He's come a long way as uh, Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook. He told some great stories about his time at Hull, played in the academy. He won an academy grand final. Yeah, yeah, played in the academy. A couple of them moved up there and they had a, a real awakening. He's in possession now. And Saints looking to recapture the lead to assert their authority here. They're being challenged on their own patch. They were challenged on their own patch by Leeds and lost. The thought of it happening again is too much for Saints fans to contemplate. Surely here's Ignatius Passy. There's a long way to go in this contest, though. And Hull, you think, are going to have to do some serious defending, some more serious defending. Here's Lussick. Here's Dodd. 
Lomax quickly on to Benison. Benison skips in field, but there's a gang of Hull FC defenders to stop his progress. The pass bobbles in front of Lomax, picks it up off his toes. Passy wrestling his way forward. Lomax was beckoning Passy into the space. He's on his heels, the big man. Fifth tackle. Bang in front of those posts. Passy plays the ball. It's Dodd now. Dodd, Lomax, on it goes to Wellsby. Wellsby over the top to Rickson, and Rickson is bundled into touch. Great work from Clifford in the end. Yes, there was a knock-on and back player, Bill, but just keep your eye on the blue shirt. Both sides of the field, even when they stretch. Look at the bodies that get across. That's terrific, terrific defensive work there from Hull FC. T. Ritson, well, he thought he was dived over. But Clifford, or is it K2, comes over. Well, it's Jake Clifford. And that shows that in this game, you know you're in a good place. When you've got bodies turning up, they are, Baz, I agree. They're growing in this game, and obviously, a big win against the Leeds Rhinos, and potentially they're still in the mix. And if they want it, a win against St. Helens, that would be wins against both grand finalists from last year. Well, this is the third set in a row now, Baz, and we saw in the first half, four sets it took to crack all FC. And will it happen here again? Lusick, Lomax, Lomax, quick hands. Finds Benison and Benison weaving his way through. John Benison! Oh, what a finish from Benison! What a finish from the young winger! And Saints eventually find a way through this determined Hull FC defence. And John Benison gets his second try of the season to recapture the lead for the Saints. But it has taken some recapturing. We love a scrum playing rugby league, don't we? Beautiful dancing feet. What about the little tip on from the fullback? But he has to be brave and courageous. Benison with bodies in front of him, committed defenders in front of him, off the left, left again, and then head down and head for the line. Great stuff. Johnny Lomax makes the extra man. The ball goes behind the winger, come centre Tommy Makinson and that's all about desire just love the way Wellsby just sort of pointed there you go <laughs> the try lines that way and Benison obliged you got a try last week against the Lee Leopards in defeats so he's backed that up to put the Saints ahead Lussick has taken over the goal kicking duties Yet to kick a goal this season, Joey Lessig. This one offers him a fairly straightforward opportunity. He's got a try to his name this campaign, and now he's added a goal. And Saints ahead by ten points to six. Well, we just see this try on fall once again. Johnny Lomax does so, so well. Jack Wellsby with a beautiful tip on. David Litton just gets caught. Neither here nor there. And John Benison steps hard off that left foot. And there's an acre of space that he's just able to keep going and put the ball down, and those fans are delighted. 10-6. And because he tips that ball on Wellsby, it's not an accurate pass. If it is an accurate pass, ironically enough, I think we'll have to deal with him. Yeah. But the fact that he has to stop... Look and assess what's in front of him. Look at the landscape. He makes the right decision. Look, the young man on the wing there, his fifth game for Hull FC. Perhaps when he watches that video back, he'll just trust his inside a bit more, Baz, and not really commit. He just gets two metres up. Tries to shut Wellsby down, but the catch and pass from Wellsby was exceptional. And the finish was brilliant. Now then, Saints will be looking to, to build on that, to really dominates and put some daylight between themselves and this determined Hull FC side. This is a side that conceded 11 tries last time out in that 60 points to 14 defeat at the hands of Salford. And that was only the fourth time in his 22-year coaching career, more than 600 games, that Tony Smith, who watched a team of his, concede 60 points. He's not used to it, and he's got the right sort of response from his side this evening, albeit they are trailing now. I love that part of Joey, Joey Lussick's game. 
Tackle four, just gets his eyes up, kicks the ball down, but look what it does. The shirts up where Sato be up high. There's a number of Hull FC shirts just not even back behind the ball. And this is where Saints lift their intensity. Around that hour mark, they know they can go another level. Hearing that Matty Ashton has scored a second half hat trick for Warrington in their game against uh, the Lee Leopards. Warrington in complete control of that contest, still close between Four. Huddersfield and Wigan, still close between Four. St Helens and Hull FC. And not a lot of people thought it would be close after an hour after their performance last time out, Hull. Move. Fifth tackle. Jake Clifford, it's a big kick. It is a big one. Towering kick, and, and Ritson lets it bounce off, and... Josh Griffin couldn't collect it. Still on the last, still alive. Lingy Sal. And the referee says that is the end of that because he's hit the ground. Lingy Sal. Yes, that kick is high, Bill. Absolutely, it's high, but it's swirling and moving all over the place. And both winger and fullback were both looking at each other. Yeah. Because it was halfway in between the pair of them, beautifully judged. Well, it was St. Helens' turn to scramble there, offload after offload. And in the end, I think it was Liggy Sauer who gets caught 20 metres away from Saints' line. St. Helens just looked to clear the lines once more, Makinson now in behind the ruck. Saints not home and dry yet, coming up to the hour mark. Went into this looking to avoid three defeats in a row. They haven't lost three games in a row since the Super 8s uh, in 2017, Saints. Set restarts. Yeah, you just get the sense now that the tempo in and around the rock is just edging towards St. Helens. Joey Lussick, Tommy, uh, Tommy Makinson, Ignatius Parsi now takes over with another eight-metre carry. Move! Back! Hold! Hold! Passy slowly to his feet. Morgan Knowles. Jordan Lane down low with the tackle. Passy having to stretch for that and <laughs> sells a little dummy. Nobody falling for that. Chris Sata makes the tackle. Bell, oh, lovely ball, lovely ball finds Wellsby. And Saints go back to back tries. James Bell serving it on a plate to Jack Wellsby for his second try of the season. And you're right, the momentum yeah. is in Saints' favour now. Well, you just sensed it, Bill, didn't you? Iggy Parsi coming up with a couple of quick play of the ball. James Bell with an outrageous offload for the supporting Jack Wellsby. Ignatius Parsi, two carries in that set. Dodd straightens up, gets a one-on-one -on -one for Bell, who just promotes the ball to Jack Wellsby to score in the corner. What a moment to score. He knows it as well. But going back to James Bell, he's been in terrific form, averaging over 150 metres so far for Saints. In the back row tonight. And you can see there, Jack Wellsby knows to quote yourself, Bill, he's put it on a plate for him. Birthday present served up by James Bell for 22-year-old Jack Wellsby. 22 today he is, and he's already achieved so much in the game. The reigning Super League Young Player of the Year. And, of course, the player of the match in that historic World Club Challenge victory over Penrith. Now then, Joey Lussick. This is a more testing conversion for him. Succeeded with his first. This one from wide out. Lussick looks good. He's got the job. 16-6, let's go down to the sidelines and hear from Jenna. Yeah, ever since Ben Davis came off about 12 minutes ago, he's been receiving treatment. Uh, he has injured his left ankle. It is heavily strapped and iced. But they don't look too concerned. As I said, he has been receiving treatment. Thanks, Jenna. Well, he's got the satisfaction of scoring the only try of the first half. Not just the odd one. That's Ben Davis. Full time at Huddersfield. And we're going to have just got home. 14 12 in a tight contest there. Mm, big win that. 
Yeah, Huddersfield fancied to be among the front runners this season. But their colours downed on their own pitch by Matty Peets, Wigan side. Well, I think we'll get a real good look at Hull FC to see what they are really made of this year. 17 minutes to go. And what kind of response have they got? Well, that's a great one. And they've got a great response in Clifford's pick the ball up. Jake Clifford is going to hit back for Hull FC. The error from the Saints. And immediately, Hull are back in the hunt. Talk about gifting it on a plate. Saints did just that for Jake Clifford. Gets his second of the season. Well, punishing defence, wasn't it? The mistake came from Jake Wingfield coming away from his line. And while St Helens have been in front, I've been looking at the body language, I've been trying to watch out for the communication. Who in the leadership group is standing up and giving that calm body language, that reassuring communication to everybody else? Well, it's him, Jake Clifford. He's incredible with the ball. We've seen the power and the danger of his high kicks, his distribution. And it's just general energy. He's the heart and soul of this Hull FC side. Picks up the loose ball. Yeah. And there's a, there's a massive difference between Tony Smith's side this week and last week. I mentioned before, minute, they scored first, Salford scored next, and then 56 points followed. Not at any point has anybody in these blue and white shirts, not black and white, thought to themselves, we're out of this game and we're giving up. What a, what a difference a week is. Back-to-back -back tries for Jake Clifford. He got the first try in their loss against Salford last week. And looking to tag on another couple of points to close the gap. And just when Saints thought they might be just asserting their authority here, I'll have given them a bit of a reminder. This is a whole side who've come here for a scrap. Yeah, 65 minutes in. Tells you that they're not going to go away in this game. I was almost saying before the error from Wingfield is what kind of reaction, what sort of Hull FC side are we going to see going eight points behind in the game? Well, the answer is we're going to see a tough one for the final 15 minutes, a four-point ball game. Clifford there with his fifth try of the season. Stay behind, boys, stay behind. Sets us up for a great finish. Hull very much in the contest. Tex Hoy collects that. He's held everything that's come his way tonight as Tex Hoy. Now then Brandt Dwyer. And Hull with Jordan Lane. We'll start again. Chris Satai and oh, Satai. It was his tackle that dislodged the ball at the other end of the field and led to Jake Clifford's try. And now he's dislodged the ball and put his side under pressure. Oh, it's a cruel sport, isn't it? The pass is just behind him. He knows where he's running. He knows who he's running at. There's a bit of a confusion there, I think it is, Baz, between Brown and Satai. Both looked at each other as the ball went to the floor. Miscommunication. I think the huge confusion is with Brad Dwyer. He thinks the other player's having it. He's always expecting it satire. He wants it because he wants to get on the front foot. Well, they're going to have to get on with defending this set. A scrum last time from a similar position. Yeah, they paid the price that time. And they could be under pressure. Well, they are under pressure here. They're on their own try line. Saints within range. Sirenen plays the ball. Here is Lomax. LMS. Oh. Lingi Sao and Satai combining. And that is some combination. Roby, Dodds, Wellsby, here's Lomax, Lomax shapes to pass, he's lost the ball, and Hull are going to snap it up, are they? Yes, Joe Lovadour it is who comes up with it, but the referee will bring him back. It's Joe Lovadour who hunts from the inside and forces the mistake, he's double pumping the ball, Johnny Lomax, you can see. He's yeah, trying to wait and see whether the short or long ball is on. And Davey Litton there, doesn't need yeah. to be coming in like that. Just forward off Lomax. 19-year-old, yes, relatively inexperienced. Johnny Lomax just runs out of space Let's in the end. Boys, it was terrific it work, as you mentioned, Baz, from the inside in the blue shirts. Okay. Out. We'll go 
A bit of a let off for, for Hull FC there. Here is Adam Swift. He's been quiet in this second half, nursing possibly that injury that Jenna referred to, and you can see him after he played that ball. He's not totally comfortable. And once again, he tops the meter count for Hull FC. 126 meters made with ball in hand. If he's doing that with one calf, he's all right. Physio just paying him a visit, in fact, just out of shot. Now then, here is Joe Lovadua, Fijian international. He'll be 25 tomorrow. Will he have something to celebrate, maybe? Here is Andre Savelio, fifth tackle on the halfway line. The ball's with Tex Hoy, and Hoy hoists that one. Wellsby comes for it. Davy Lipton was challenging. It's ended up in Wellsby's hands, and he's got her out of the clutches of Lipton. Can't get away from uh, Lover Doer, though. Here's Benison. Oh, good footwork there, Benison. Brad Dwyer came hunting. T. Ritson. And you sense Two. that he could be dangerous against the, a tiring side in the closing games. Uh, stages of a very gruelling game. As the ground firms up and he gets more and more confidence at yeah. this level, he's going to score a boatload. You know, Saints have always had fast wingers, haven't they? They've always had pace on the edges. Oh! oh so close. Oh. Cam Scott. He knows and all, doesn't he? He just gets a fingertip to it. It's such a difficult skill, isn't it, to get where that ball is, yeah. tip it up into oh. your path as you're running. I can, you can hear the groans yeah. of anguish from the other side of the country. Yeah. I, I'm going back some years, and he was a whole centre at the very beginning of his career, but Gary Schofield was an expert of that. He'd get in the defensive line, tip it up, and be able to regather it. I'll tell you what, if that pass does find its way past him, they were in all sorts of trouble, yeah. Roby with a little dart up towards the halfway line for a Saints side of the leading 16-12 here. The important is Sirinan now. Sorry, Bill. The important thing for Paul Wellens, what he's able to do, he's look at his bench, he's brought James Roby on. Matty Lees has made his way onto the field, so a lot of experience used to this kind of tough encounter will know what to do. Lou McCarthy, Scarsbrook. Three tackles gone. Dodds, Lomax. Here is Wellsby. Wellsby taking him on himself. Love it, up. Spins him to the ground. Here is Lomax. Now Alex Wormsley powering forward. Down low was Brad Dwyer giving away a bit of height there. Up top was Chris Satay. Roby on the last and Lomax, it's quick hands oh. and out of play. And just again, I know Brian Carney wasn't keen on us using it, but clunky springs to mind. Well, I'm going to say Scruffy, the final pass yeah. there, he do so well, there's three on one. Okay, man, right, that down, down, Bill, Scruffy, that's the new word. <laughs> we'll see if we can annoy him with that one. <laughs> it's just the final pass there, Jack Wellsby, the catch and pass, it's such a difficult Go. skill to do. And normally, nine times out of ten, Jack Wellsby nails that pass. One. On that occasion, it was just a bit scruffy, yeah. Ball, that's, hold. that's two. Hold. <laughs> that's one. Hold Discipline, boys. Well, it's 16-12, we're inside the last ten minutes. Hull FC are still very much in this contest. Oh, wow, well, there's, a, there's a big hit there. Matt. Well, we get this all the time, don't we? Morgan yeah. Knowles. That's him, that's what he yeah. does, he puts pressure. And he's, he's such an aggressive player, yeah. isn't it? He's such an aggressive player. And when you play that style, there always is that risk that you do get it slightly wrong. You know, the St. Saint Helens side in 2023, Baz, on average, they miss the most tackles and they give away the most penalties per game as it stands. And it's no wonder why they've lost the last two games. 42 missed tackles last week. They've been much better this, uh, this game. They've only missed 10. But giving away penalties, it is an issue at the moment for Saints. Kyle had a massive burn on that Leeds game. If you think back, both back rowers, back rowers Matautia ended up going to the Simbin, Sirenin to the Simbin for those same offences. 
And Paul Wellens referenced it after the defeat against Lee last week, didn't he? That the discipline had cost them mm -hmm. and needed to be well, they improved. Were in, they were in lead twice, weren't they, in both yeah. games? Well, they're still in the lead in this one. Here's Lovadua. Here's Cam Scott, and Scott as well skips away. Here's Davy Litton, but Litton goes to ground. Three tackles gone this set. Lovadua. Here's Jake Clifford, and Clifford. An opportunist try to his name already this evening. 30 metres away from that Saints line. Lingy Sow straightening up, looking for a, a gap in the middle. There's nothing doing for him. That's the fifth tackle. And what will Clifford come up with here now? They're going to run this, and Josh Griffin is going to try and use his strength, but he's met in kind by the Saints defenders. If you think about where they started that set to where they've turned the ball over, they'll be pretty pleased with that as we enter the final six or seven minutes. Syridan with a tough carry away from his own end. Are looking to force the error from this Saints side who are in such... Look at that on LMS. Such commitment. Jack Brown was in there. Chris Satai as well. Here's Wormsley. And three tackles gone. They're up to their 25 metres. Uh, 25 metres from their own try line as Morgan Knowles is in possession now. Four tackles gone. Lewis Dodds. Wingfield takes the pass. That's the fifth. And Saints will... Presumably look to get some distance on this kick. It's Roby in the end and just a little bit of, of indecision there. And it's picked up by Tex Hoy, the fullback, and it's Roby following up with the tackle from his own kick. Well, there, Roby trying to find a more orthodox kicker. In the end, just ends up punting the ball as far away as he could. Tex Hoy is down. Here is Adam Swift. Not operating at full capacity, Swift, after that calf injury. He appeals to the referee there, Jordan Lane. Over the halfway line, three tackles, four tackles gone. Hull need to find some energy from somewhere in the closing minutes here. Little kick sits up for Swift. Swift chips ahead, chips ahead for Dwyer. Oh! Could not get there, the ball ran away from him, and the chance goes. Is that oh, the game the there? of a ball. Yeah, beautiful skill there from George Griffin. Perfect kick from zero. Swift, gets the bounce as well. But he almost read his name in the paper, didn't he? Just wouldn't oh. sit up Magic. enough for Brad oh, yeah. Dwyer. Is that the game? What an opportunity that was. Two. Brad Dwyer, oh, so two. close. What about the smarts from Josh Griffin in the build-up to it? Third. Catches the ball, steps back off his oh, left foot ball. and just sees that the wingers came in and just slides it through for Swift. Inventive stuff. Four. And one of the chances of Saints going up the other end and putting this game to bed in clinical fashion. Five. Off the hook. Move. And that's the fifth tackle, Roby. His Dodd, Dodd stabs a little kick in, and Tex Hoy, who's hobbling, comes across. Hoy has had a great game. Yeah, another good kick there. He's had a good game, Lewis Dodd. Dodd. Yeah, he's just it's done everything that's needed him to do tonight. A number of times, we just see this kick in, in, in the play before, sorry, Brad Dwyer, he's, oh, he catches that. Agonising. Yeah, but going back to Lewis Dodd, the number of times he's straightened up to create the extra man out wide, well, short little kicks as well, building pressure, and Hull FC in this game, whenever pressure's being built, and they've let a try in. Here's Wormsley charging for the line, and the defence from Hull FC right to the last is determined. Wormsley wrestles his way free. Roby is going to try and seal it. Roby is going to try and seal this for the Saints. He's held up just short as well. Look at this, this defence from Hull. Can they keep Saints at bay here? Three minutes to go. Here's Wellsby trying to burrow his way through, ducking in. 
evading them. But Fash makes the tackle. Roby. Here's Dodd now. Dodd, short ball. Good defence again from Holland Matty Lees that time. Fifth tackle. Change of direction. Make it to Benison. Second of the night to seal it for Saints or has it? Has he got that down? It's another call for video ref Tom Grant. Hey, we are on tackle five. We have a try. Please take. Touch line grounding, please, mate. Tackle five. On field call the try. Touch grounding, please. So he's got white boots on. He's well in the field of play at this point. Thank you. Still on the need, and then missing. Tom Grant, one look, that's all it took to confirm that John Benison has got his second try of the night, and he has settled this contest in the final minutes. And how cruel it is. What a cruel game. The opportunity for Hull FC up the other end of the field, agonisingly close. And Saints take the game up the other end of the field. A young John Benison gets his third try of the campaign. He missed out on World Club Challenge glory in Australia, did Benison. Look, I know Benison's going to get the credit for scoring the try. Obviously, his second of the game, but the decision there by Lewis Dodd, that's not an accident. He's had a little bit of communication with the centre. He's had a little bit of a chat, a little bit of a nod. And given Tommy Makinson enough information to know that the ball's coming back and it's a beautiful anticipation yeah. of where the space is going to be it's just... his influence on this game has been huge for st ellens because there hasn't really been any standout performers no. No. but the decisions he's made the kicking game the way that he's dug into the line the way that he's distributed the ball and you suspect steering the side along with johnny lomax lewis dog has been outstanding well yeah. now he's got the opportunity to Add two more points to Saints tally with this conversion attempt. We've had Lussick kicking goals and Makinson and Dodd. Dodd has missed with that one. 20 points to 12. I mentioned a couple of times tonight that St. Helens would be happy to take it into the final. Dying embers of this game. Yes, they were four points in front, but they needed another try to make sure of it. And Lewis Dodger steps up hard off his right foot, straightens up once again. It's just a smart, smart play there. John Benison holding his depth, recognizing that ball coming back and just squeezing it down in the corner to take this game away from Hull FC. It's what championship sides do. They find a way to win, even when they're not at their absolute best. Well, who's been the champion player tonight? Barry McDermott's got the job of uh, picking a player of the match. Who's it going to be? I think I might have an idea. You might have given it away a bit. You've got to give credit to the players in, in the whole shirts, and I think Adam Swift, Josh Griffin in the back line, and Brad Fish, Brad Fash in the middle for Hull FC have stood up tall. And it's been a far different performance for Hull FC, but it's got to go to a St. Helens player. The character they've shown this evening, and for me, the player that stood up beyond everybody else is Lewis Dodd. He's the bet Fred player of the match. Let's get in then, boys. Come on. It's just important for them to get back to winning ways. Let's get in. there. Title winning sides don't lose three games in a row, and they've shown it tonight. <laughs> yep, final act of this enthralling game and Saints take the points but Hull FC take a lot of credit especially going into this game on the back of that thumping defeat last time out in front of their own supporters but it's Saints who end their losing streak back-to-back -back defeats